413 WMAZ Morning starts now. A beautiful sunrise underway, kicking off what will be another really nice day. I'll have those details and talk about a summer-like setup that's right around the corner. That's all coming up. Plus, a fire is not something you expect to see when you go to pick up your groceries, but that's what happened at a Central Georgia Walmart. Why investigators say one woman's behind it. Plus, a solar plant stalled in Bibb County. The concerns people have and what's next for the project. A Macon, a Macon restaurant owner is battling stage 4 lung cancer. How his family is stepping up to help their father in need. Well, good morning and just take in this beautiful sunrise over downtown Macon this morning. Isn't that gorgeous? The time is 631 on this Thursday, April 28th. I'm Caitlin Heck. And I'm Wanye Reese. We've been talking about it all morning. We have a little bit of that smoke in mm -hmm. the air, but it really creates for a beautiful sunrise each morning. Absolutely. And Courtney, hopefully a beautiful day ahead too. That's right. It will be. Now it might still be a little hazy. That air quality not considered good more on the moderate side. So what does that mean for you at home? If you have any kind of respiratory issues, you just want to take it easy outside. Don't exert yourself too much, but it does make for a beautiful sunrise. You can see some of that haze. We have a few controlled burns across the area that really kicked off yesterday. So we're getting some of that lingering haze, but that does allow for a really nice start to the day. All those extra particles, those dust particles in the air that actually acts as some sort of reflector of color. So it allows for more of that bending of light to allow for the beautiful colors in the sky. 45 in the city of Macon. It's cool out there. It's nice and crisp as well. The air super dry, a really comfortable start to the day. 49 in Gordon, 48 in Warner Robins, 50 in Montezuma, 48 in Forsyth and in McRae, and 47 in Sandersville. Humidity area wide, dry, really nice morning, and that will lead to another beautiful day with lots of sunshine. Temperatures by your lunch hour in the mid 70s, and we'll top out in the low 80s today. Now we'll stay dry through the end of the work week, so tomorrow, but rain does return for the week. Weekend. I'll have those details in a few minutes. Thank you, Courtney. We start this half hour with news out of Forsyth, where a woman is arrested after a fire at the Walmart. The city's fire department chief says no one was hurt, although some merchandise did get damaged. Monroe County Chair Brad Freeman says around six last night, a woman tried to break into the gun safe. When she wasn't able to do that, she started a fire in the store. A crews evacuated the Walmart and firefighters put the flames out. Authorities arrested the woman at a nearby motel. There's no word on charges right now. And now to three other headlines we are following this morning, starting with an update on a weekend shootout outside of Warner Robins Bowling Alley. Investigators have now charged three teens with aggravated assault in connection to it. They are Philip Bango, Colby Tucker, and Jerico Ongbird. They're all 18 years old. Warner Robins police say officers and members of the U.S. Marshals Task Force arrested the men between Monday and yesterday. Police say Bango shot at the other two men with a rifle, hitting several cars. Tucker and Ongburn fired back with pistols. No one got hurt. The shootout happened in the parking lot of the Gold Cup Bowling Center on Russell Parkway around 1230 Sunday morning. Police say more charges and arrests are possible. One man can now spend the rest of his life in prison for a 2020 murder case in Houston County. District Attorney William Kendall says yesterday a judge sentenced 23 year old Terrence Rouse to life with the possibility of parole. A couple of weeks ago, a jury convicted Rouse of felony murder and other charges in a November 2020 case that led to the death of 18 year old Jamal Smith. Kendo says Rouse and Smith went to an apartment complex in Warner Robins to rob a drug dealer. Rouse pulled out a gun when he walked in the apartment. Kendall says the person inside also had a gun and started shooting. One of the bullets hit Smith, who later died. The investigation continues into a deadly shooting outside a sports store in Macon. It happened Tuesday night in the parking lot of the Academy Sports on Eisenhower Parkway. The Bibb County Sheriff's Office says that's where someone shot 15 year old Davius Williams. Investigators found him about a mile away in the parking lot of Southwest High School, parking lot rather of Southwest High School. The sheriff's office says they're still looking into how Williams got to the school. Investigators arrested 20 year old Tajari Harris in the case. The sheriff's office says he's charged with three counts of aggravated assault and one count of murder. Bibb deputies are still investigating what led up to the shooting and whether Harris and Williams knew each other. A spokeswoman for the Bibb County School District says Williams was a student at Appling Middle School. In your state headlines, the Georgia Department of Corrections says an execution date is set for a Georgia man convicted in the 1976 attack on elementary school girls. Over 45 years ago, Virgil Delano Presnell Jr. abducted and attacked an 8 year and 10 year old girl as they walked home from school in Cobb County. A jury convicted him of killing one and raping the other. He is said to be executed May 17th at the state prison in Jackson. The State Department of Corrections says Presnell Jr. will be the 54th inmate to die by lethal injection. 
Governor Brian Kemp and state school superintendent Richard Woods are criticizing the firing of leader in Georgia's third largest school system. DeKalb County School Board members voted Tuesday to fire Superintendent Cheryl Watson Harris immediately. She was on the job less than two years in the 93,000 student district. Watson Harris says she was blindsided by her firing. The move came after school board chair Vicki Turner appeared to blame Watson Harris for poor conditions at one of the district's high schools in a letter to Woods. However, Turner and a majority of the board say relations with Watson Harris have been deteriorating for some time. Tonight you have a chance to hear from two of the candidates looking to advance to the November election for governor. Governor Kemp and former U.S. Senator David Perdue meet in Savannah for the second of three debates. It's happening at our CBS affiliate WTOC and starts at 7 this evening. The two recently debated in Atlanta. Hot topics included crime in the city, building an electric truck plant in Georgia, and the outcome of the 2020 presidential election. Kemp and Purdue will face off with other candidates in the Republican primary on May the 24th. It's now 636. Many people in Perry are celebrating a new company coming in to beef up the city's economy. Uh, this week, Governor Brian Kemp and others announced that the Jack Links Jerky Company is building its southeast plant in Houston County, and they plan to hire 800 people. It doesn't look like much just yet, but by next year, this site west of I-75 of Perry Parkway is set to be home to a beef jerky plant. Now, the owner of Perry's Chick-fil-A knows that an economic driver for the city is a plus for everyone. Well, anytime you have a company that invests that much money into a facility, 800 new jobs, well, that's future employees for me. They all have teenagers and probably that go to school in the local school system. But it also is just dollars and cents. We have more people here that live in Perry that's going to create revenue for us and then more opportunities to give back to the community as well. Jack Link, CEO, says they're committed to becoming a strong community advocate. The Development Authority of Housing County says this is the company's largest manufacturing facility to date. They're calling it a $450 million investment. The plant will join other Houston County food producers like Frito-Lay and Tyson Foods. Well, some people in Bibb County hope a solar plant project does not see the sun. Their concerns led the Planning and Zoning Board to defer a vote on the plant until May 23rd. It's so project representatives can set up a town hall with people who live around Fulton Mill and Mount Pleasant Church Roads. That's where the proposed 780-acre plant would be. At Monday's planning and zoning meeting, some in the area came forward with worries about property values declining and potential harm to natural habitats. You can find this whole story right now on 13WMAZ.com from our partners with Mercer Center for Collaborative Journalism. And turning to health news this morning, the school year is ending soon, but one Macon organization is trying to make sure students get important services over the summer. Making Periods Easier provides menstrual products to school nurses to give students during the school year. Now they're working to collect 5,200 packs of products for female students to take home over the summer. They need your help, though. Today from 6 until 8 at Society Garden, you can donate pans, underwear, cosmetic bags, and flushable wipes. They'll be also celebrating their third anniversary with a silent auction. Today, you can help give the gift of life through blood donations. Macon Volunteer Clinic on Rogers Avenue will host a Red Cross blood drive. It's happening from noon to 5 this afternoon. They say walk-ins are welcome. The Red Cross says anyone who donates now through May the 19th will be entered to win a travel trailer camper. Oh, wow. <laughs> Plus a $10 <laughs> e-gift card to a store of their choice. That is one heck of a gift. Mm -hmm. Still ahead on 13 WMAZ Morning. And I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited. I'm thankful and I'm blessed. Meet the guy who Central Georgians are, are praising his services in our new series, Service with a Smile. It's part of a new series that we're introducing. That story, it's coming up at 648. But right now, your time is now 639 a.m. I can't wait to see that story. Yeah, Madeline, our very own Madeline, she's mm -hmm. been working very hard on it. I'm proud of her, and I cannot wait to see it. I know, and it's good that we're celebrating those people who just go to work every day just yes. to make people happy. Exactly, and I feel like this is definitely something that Courtney does every morning, but sometimes Aww. she is the bearer of bad news with you this know, forecast. Yes. And <laughs> unfortunately, I'm not going to be the bearer of the worst news, but maybe not the best news. Well, about we'll perspective. It's, that's right. Thank you. It's all relative. All right. This morning, though, really a beautiful start to the day. You're looking live on top of the Fred Roberts building in Dublin. By the way, that's a new name. We haven't talked about Madeline yet, Wanye, on this show. Madeline is one of our wonderful digital folks that you don't see behind the scenes, and her work is beautiful, and you'll get to see it in just 
just a few minutes. You're definitely going to tune in for that story. We have to give credit where it's due. She's really, really good at what she does. All right, everyone, a really stunning sunrise to start the day. You might notice it looks a little hazy out there, though. If you were driving out and about across parts of central Georgia yesterday, personally driving home to Houston County yesterday, I saw a huge plume of smoke, and that was potentially from a controlled burnover in Peach County. You haven't confirmed that one yet, but there was a lot of smoke out there, and that was the case across a couple of places in central Georgia, Putnam County, Jones County. So that did cause for some haze and that is continuing this morning. And that does make for a beautiful sunrise 45 right now in Dublin temperature wise. It feels nice out there, but just even though it looks beautiful, something to keep in mind with that smoke in the air, the air quality is considered moderate. That means people with respiratory issues just limit your outdoor activity, staying outdoors too long. You just don't want to do that. That's not going to be comfortable for you. As we go through the day, it's going to look nice though. We'll continue to have a lot of sunshine and we'll feel wonderful. Nice and warm temperatures in the upper 70s and low 80s. That humidity staying low for now. And with all the sunshine, we're going to see if this graphic finally stays put. Looks like it is. The UV index is going to stay very high today. Same for tomorrow as we continue to have mostly sunny skies. But then as we pick up our cloud cover on Saturday, the UV index will go down to a six. So still high. What does that mean? If you plan on spending time outdoors, I know this time of year everyone likes to head out to the parks, maybe even hang by the pool with these temperatures getting warmer. Wear your sunscreen, take breaks in the shade so that you can protect your skin. That's very important. Wear a hat, all those good things. It's very important to protect your skin this time of year. Can't stress enough. Sunscreen when the UV index is as high as it's going to be the next few days. And we'll have plenty of opportunity to get outside and enjoy all the beautiful weather. Tomorrow is also going to be mostly sunny, slightly breezy, which will probably make the mid-80s feel even nicer, low to mid-80s rather. As we head into Saturday, we're going to increase that humidity, so it will feel a little more uncomfortable. It's not going to be summertime sticky, but we'll experience partly sunny skies with that extra moisture content that will build cloud cover. We're also going to have the chance for those afternoon pop up showers and thunderstorms, afternoon and evening showers and storms. We could have a few showers linger into the late evening on Friday into Saturday or excuse me on Saturday into Sunday, but Moral of the story as we head into the weekend as we do start to introduce those rain and storm chances back to the forecast. If thunder roars, head indoors. Be mindful of the weather. Warm and dry the next couple of days and then storms return starting Saturday all the way through Wednesday as we stay in quite the summer-like pattern. And temperatures will be in the mid to upper 80s Sunday through the middle of next week.